Good morning, everybody. Once again, Dr. Salim is here with you guys from Echo Medical Center Institute. Uh, let's talk about a few things. It may help you guys and your daily practice if you do uh, ultrasound studies, if it's a vascular Doppler studies, especially if you do any type of studies, but uh, you put your diagnosis on the image and the picture. Uh, which was made by the sound. So especially today's topic is the difference between color Doppler and power Doppler. What can color Doppler help and what can be achieved by the power Doppler? When we can use color Doppler, when we can use power Doppler. I think this is uh, for some healthcare providers, especially those who work in the radiology department and uh, put their diagnosis on the uh, pictures, images, which was made by the sound. So it's kind of uh, with some of, not all of them, but some of them are still a little bit confused about where to use color Doppler, where to use the power Doppler. So let's make it simple and easy, very simple. Let's talk about this, that what can be provided by the color Doppler and what can be provided by the power Doppler. So due to their, their properties, due to their, uh, usage, we will know which one we should pick, correct? So color Doppler will give us four important information. So they are uh, like this. Number one, the color Doppler will let you know the presence or absence of the flow. If there is a flow or there is a no flow, doesn't matter if it's a blood flow or any other flow, but they will tell you the, the movable structure. So in our case, it's RBCs. So is there a blood flow or no blood flow? One, presence of the flow. Secondly, it will tell me an average velocity of the flow. It is not exactly like a peak systolic and end diastolic flow, but at least it can tell me that it is an average flow speed velocity there. Is it with a normal limit? Is it out of the normal limit? Maybe it's a very slow flow, it's a very high uh, speed flow because you can see some changes on their color. So that will be uh, called as an average flow. So second, it will give me, provide me the information to the velocity, which is average velocity speed. The third one is actually, we can say the direction of flow. Color Doppler can tell me which type of Doppler shift is this. Is this flow going towards the transducer or is it going away from the transducer? So is the flow a positive Doppler shift or is it a negative uh, Doppler shift? So that is very important because some of the arteries, we are looking that we want to find a normal flow on them. It has to be towards forward flow, not backward flow. So color Doppler will be the only modality to be used to have this type of information, uh, like to be not confused. Okay, like, first of all, we should know the anatomy. For example, I'm telling you, and CCA, common carotid arteries, we know in the CCA and other peripheral arteries, uh, but this is a cerebral vasculature, of course. So the flow in CCA is going forward flow. It is going towards when we putting and looking for any uh, arteries. So it has to be towards, it's, it's going forward flow actually. So that's a normal for that. But if you look to, when you're scanning um, TCDs, transcranial Doppler, if you look to uh, one of the artery, for example, posterior cerebral artery, and you're using temporal window. So in this case, P1, this, the segment of uh, posterior cerebral artery, the, the first portion, the first segment, that will be towards. But then on the same artery, when it curves, then the second portion of it, the P2 or segment two of the posterior cerebral artery, PCA, that has to be normally a wave flow. Or for example, if you are using um, trans uh, occipital window. So on the occipital window, you're looking for the uh, both vertebra uh, vertebral arteries and plus you're looking for the uh, basilary artery. So the vertebral both right and left, and then they, of course, they join and they make uh, basilar artery. So they look normally has to be away. The Doppler shift has to be away. It has to look uh, negative Doppler shift. Or we can say, if you really like the colors, it has to be blue color on that case, which is normal. So the color Doppler will give us the direction of the flow. So this way we can easily diagnose that is the flow going to the right direction or to the wrong direction? 
so to the normal direction or to the abnormal direction. So this will be a big help. For example, if you're looking into any uh, echocardiography, you do any study of echocardiography. So easy to diagnose if there is a regurg or insufficiency. So we can see in the valvular diseases. The fourth one is the, the information we can get with the pillar droplet is the nature of the flow. Very important. So nature of the flow will tell me, is this a laminar normal physiologic flow or is this a turbulent flow? Then we, of course, we have two types of turbulent flow. One is normal physiologic turbulent flow, which can be found mostly in the bifurcations or a little uh, area of where the two artery, uh, the, the one artery is bifurcating. So that's a little bulging area normally. So that is like, for example, the bulbous of uh, CCA. So that's a normal turbulent uh, physiologic flow. But mostly if you see anywhere other than that area, uh, that there is a turbulent flow. And you guys understand that the turbulent flow is the mixture of both, both shifts, uh, Doppler shift both. So negative and positive, you see it on the same location. So blood goes to all directions. So that's a turbulent flow. And that's most commonly it's seen post-stenotically where the stenosis is after the stenosis because the area is dilated. Or Mostly you can find that type of flow and the aneurysm, which mm, any aneurysm, but I'm talking about any type of aneurysm will be, but if it's a fossiform aneurysm, you will be able to see that most commonly a lot of that term. So these are the four important information we get with the color Doppler. Now we understand where to use the color Doppler. When you need to have these information, these four information, the presence of the flow, the average velocity of the flow you needed, the direction of the flow is your target, and also the nature of the flow is your target. Use a color Doppler. And power Doppler is very sensitive, a lot sensitive. So only and only it can give us only one information. Is there a flow or no flow? And the power Doppler, you cannot distinguish between the negative Doppler shift and positive Doppler because there is no baseline. In the color bar, PRF, there is no baseline. It will be only telling you that the flow is present or no. So we really, really need to use the power Doppler when this is a question mark area, uh, especially for the tight stenosis, which Color Doppler is not able to give you that information. Maybe a few RBCs are moving. Maybe it's a little bit of the blood flow or any flow is there. Like it's a really small amount of flow is there that the color Doppler is not able to catch it. Then in that case, power Doppler is very sensitive. Of course, we will use power Doppler for that to see the flow. Doesn't matter which way the flow is going. That's not the subject in this case. Is it going away or is it going towards? Is it a positive or Doppler shift or negative Doppler? That will be not the concern. The only concern is, is the organ or the distal tissue getting blood flow or no? Maybe it will be one of the concern of the orthopedic surgeon or any other surgeons they maybe they're uh, deciding to do any amputation uh, on that area or no. So for that reason, I think it's better than to use power Doppler when it comes to, to distinguish between the tight stenosis and occlusion. And then better to use power Doppler, not color Doppler. Color Doppler will not helpful in that case. Even if you can increase the color gain and you can decrease the scale, or uh, we can say the PRF, still it will not help, it will not work. And one more thing additionally, uh, I know the video is going to be more uh, longer, but let me quickly tell you, maybe if one of you are sitting for one of the national or international examination, so maybe somebody may ask you, the color Doppler, another difference, what is other than these differences? What are What is the other difference between the color Doppler and power Doppler? So color Doppler is from the family of pulse wave ultrasound. This is, we have two types of ultrasound. You guys understand that. The pulse wave ultrasound and continuous wave ultrasound. So color Doppler is from the family or from, from this group, which is pulse wave Doppler ultrasound. And then power Doppler is from the continuous wave ultrasound. So that's why the sensitivity of the power Doppler is a lot better and higher than the color Doppler. So I hope 
this information may help you in your practice. Or if you're setting for one of the national or international examination like ERMS or other examinations or interviews, maybe somebody may ask you this question. So try to answer a more reasonable answer. So it will be more helpful for you. And uh, so I think I think this, this information will help you a lot. If you think these informations are very good and help somebody else too, and that person is also in this field, please share it with them. And don't forget to subscribe the channel also. Have a nice day. Take care and wait for the next uh, video. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye.